Hey guys, Gary Campbell back here with uh, the Acorn Project. Uh, this one's, let's call this uh, section or part 3.5. Uh, some unexpected changes that were made to the uh, control wiring. So one of the things you may notice is I've taken my X, Y, and Z and VFD alarms, wired them through this relay box. There's another video on how that was done but it's basically taking uh, four normally open 5 volt relays or excuse me 5 volt alarms and changing them into a 24 volt normally closed alarm that's put on drive fault uh, configured as. The second thing I did is I wanted to add a couple of options so I put an inexpensive four channel relay uh, module here and I'm using it to control my spindle forward uh, turn on a rotary uh, limit switch so I can zero the rotary axis room for a future laser and for dust collection switch on and off the most important probably the most the reason for all of this was I've end up removing the step and direction signals off of the acorn board terminals and I've used a solder cup DB25 connector to get these wires to the uh, DB25 they're run through here and uh, go to each of the drives so in in my case I was having a drive that would not always operate drives that would not always operate forward and reversed so what I ended up doing is putting the scope on it and there was I could tell by the signal that it didn't like it and the signal out of the DB25 connector uh, was much cleaner and much more user friendly uh, and it, it immediately started my drives working right so I'm going to show you a couple three methods by which you can easily hook up to that DB25 connector uh, should your drives like that signal better? Okay, I'm back over at my wiring bench. I've got an acorn board here and uh, one of the easiest, not the cheapest, ways to uh, get pins to hook up step and direction drives is to add a breakout board so this is a breakout board as you can see it's a Winford engineering BRK SD 25M this is their slim small model it's about one of the smallest nicest ones these are more expensive than some of the ones you buy out there but they're all tested and I've never had a failure so the easy way to do that is just to simply this is of course a male plug it in and then take the pins that you want out of there to your step and you know to your drives so that's the that's the easiest probably and the most expensive okay the second method I'm going to show you to make up those connections is just using a DB25 cable this is a male they're about 10 bucks cut in half so it costs you five bucks so I've got it cut and stripped back so I can get at the wires I'm also using my multimeter off my on my test bench and I've got it set to continuity so that when there is continuity between the terminals it beeps Then I've taken and put an alligator clip on there and I'll use the alligator clip to hook up to my wires and I'll take a take one wire here, one, I do these one at a time, strip it, put the alligator clip on, plug the cable into a DB25 breakout board that has numbered pins and then testing this, continuity, just taken. run down to where I've got continuity and you can see my continuity here is on pin 10 so I will write that down 
in uh, a little sheet that I have that that shows that color is is that pin but in our case we would not be using it normally I would just take that then and clip that wire off shorter and then go on to the next wire Okay, I'm over on my other bench now. I uh, wanted to show you the least expensive but probably hardest way to do it. Uh, I happen to do mine this way with a uh, using a DB25 male solder cup connector. And these will these aren't too bad to do as long as you have uh, I've got a solder rework station. And it has a nice very fine point so it makes this doing this relatively easy uh, I put them in a vise and <laughs> use my magnifying glass because I'm an old guy uh, but nonetheless you these are these solder cup connections are made to solder up you just just take a wire strip them and they will the wire just places into here and then you solder, solder them up that one's a little long of course but uh, Nonetheless, you solder up, and in my case, uh, I soldered, if you look at the pinouts, and I'm going to show that here, I soldered my four grounds down here, then I started at pin 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and got the direction and pulse or step for my four axes, and that's what's shown in my other video. So, there's three methods to do it. Th these cost about two bucks. I happen to have them in stock. So I use that method, but all of the other methods are viable just to just make sure you get them all the way that you need them.